Hey guys, welcome back to my Booksfield Life channel. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Natalia. Welcome. And for those of you who are returning, thank you so much for being back on my channel. High five. Awesome. So, today we are going to talk about a cool topic. So, let's talk about hashtag MM romance. So, let's begin by defining what MM romance is. And the reason I'm doing this, even though you might be a bookish viewer and you might already know this, is because when I came across it, I actually didn't know what it was and I didn't even know it was a thing. So I'm just sharing this definition for those that come across my video that also do not know what this means. So MM Romance is a romance fiction story that features two or more male persons in an intimate relationship. And the main question that people will ask, oh, well, there's two men, so who writes it? Actually, most of the MM romance stories are written by women. Um, and the largest readership is also women. And throughout history, women have actually been the majority of the writers in this category. That is not to say that there aren't male MM romance writers. There are. And actually, if you have some favorite ones, please share down below because I want to read them. Also, there is a huge debate online, offline, and bookish communities. Should MM romance be written by women? So, that is a complicated topic. I'm not going to touch because I'm not educated enough to convey that to you. Um, but what I will say is that I like both male MM writers and both women and queer writers who write these stories. I think they both bring an interesting perspective. Um, I think they both bring original storylines. Um, so it's up to you whether you pick a male MM romance writer or a female one or a queer one or all of them together. Um, because it's just so original. They bring such good stories to the table, such relatability, such consent, such happiness, such happy ever afters that they're just my favorites. And so I want to talk about some of the reasons why I love MM Romance. So, and I will also share with you six books in the rating from one to five, because some of them do get spicy, um, from the MM Romance genre. So one thing I do want to say is that a lot of people think that MM Romance is all about sex. It's all about erotica and they're sleeping around all the time. Um, no. I'm gonna stop that right there, okay? So, you can find erotica in MM romance. You can find men sleeping around in MM romance. But that is not the all-encompassing storylines in MM romance. Actually, I would say they're kind of like a little bit in the minority, at least from the amount of books that I've read. And so, just like there is erotica in male-female romances, and there is sex in male-female romances, and there's like extremes, it can be really mellow, or it could be like super on fire romance over here. Um, same goes for the MM category. If you're not the kind who wants to read sex in your books, you don't want to read erotica in your books, just make sure that you read that blurb on the book, that you maybe peruse a couple pages. Um, and most of the times, indie authors are more than happy to tell you if their book is super sexy or it's not, um, and you can pick it according to your liking. So most of the time I range on a, I like my books mellow, but they can get a little bit spicy kind of moment. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of both uh, when I give you the recommendations towards the end of the video. And so why I love MM Romance is number one, and number one, and I will scream it to the top of the world, Consent, consent, consent. There is something about MM Romance books that I absolutely adore. Consent is on the page. It's either written on the page, visibly said on the page. I mean, I've literally seen the word consent in an MM Romance book. I mean, it can range anything from making sure the person feels comfortable to saying, outwardly saying characters, saying, if you don't want this, let me know. Character saying, if you don't want this in the middle of what we're doing, let me know. That is so important because there is a misconception 
that once you start something or you're in the middle of an act, you shouldn't say no. You should feel bad about saying no because you kind of got yourself into it. No, okay? You did not get yourself into it. If you started it and you're not in the mood and you're done with it, just say no. Yes, it's hard, but I love that these books make it a point to emphasize that consent goes throughout the whole sexual experience. The beginning, the middle, the end, and if at some point the consent changes and it becomes no, you should be completely comfortable in doing so. Props to MM Romances. I'm not saying that MF Romances don't make this a priority, but I have read some very dubious MF Romances that um, I was like, did she really want that? Did he really want that? Yeah, I, mm, we're not gonna talk about that. The other thing I like is relatability. So I feel like every time I read MM Romances, both men in the story are going through struggles that I can relate to, whether it's like new adult or an adult book. I feel like they're trying to solve their problems in an adult way, which I was just commenting on Twitter with someone the other day. That is probably one of my favorite things in books is to not only be reading the book, but actually be learning about how to deal with real life issues while I'm reading. I learn a lot from books, guys, like literally adulting from books. Um, so I really appreciate when authors make it a point to make their books kind of real, sweep me off my feet, melt my insides, and give me a happily ever after at the same time. Number three, representation. So obviously most of these books are written by women. They're written by women of color, queer authors, trans, binary, non-binary. I mean, the whole gamut of LGBTQ uh, peoples and beautiful human beings. Um, so the representation in a lot of these books is quite front and center. I mean, there are characters from every gamut of the community and also a lot of different races. Like I've literally read about gay Filipinos and black college students who happen to be bi and, um, and being represented well by the people who write them. Um, and so that I find is really nice. I myself as a demisexual actually read a book that made me feel pretty represented. And I was like, yes, that's what I feel like. Um, and so it is nice to see yourself and other people around you in these books represented. And I'm glad those books are out there for other people who would like to also find a book that they see themselves in. And so I'm going to share with you from one to five, and I might look at my paper, just so you know, in case you see me looking down, um, just so I can tell you the right name of the authors and everything. Um, so we'll start with level one, which is basically either YA or new adult that is like mellow. There is some like, you know, basic intimacy, you know, actually let's not say basic because making out can be extremely great. So let's just say Lola, like chill intimacy, making out, holding hands, cuddling, blah, blah, etc. Um, so I'd like to highlight, I knew him, which is a coming of age story with like a Shakespearean twist. And I absolutely love this story because Julian, one of the main characters is really going through and discovering himself. And he's growing along with the boy that he likes. Um, the Shakespeare tidbits are literally timed so well that I was just laughing. So if you're a Shakespeare fan, like definitely recommend. But this one is like out of one. And I think it's a really nice coming of age story. It deals with a lot of issues like fathers and biphobia and accepting yourself and coming out and how different people's experiences are. Um, the sex is chill in that book. I'm pretty sure like there actually isn't any. There's actually a really nice scene of consent that I really appreciated because I was like, that is powerful. I'm not gonna ruin it for you, but y'all go read it. I am gonna leave the covers of the books in the corner with the author and I'll put the links down below in the description section so you guys can go take a look at the books and if you'd like to get them or read them or share them, that'd be great. I would say at level two, we have Alice in Temple books, hear me closely. The C. Croft series, okay? Alice in Temple also has some very spicy books. 
um, that rate in the category five section. But I would say that cold pressed and top shelf um, by Alison Temple are pretty good two books. Um, actually one of them takes place in a bookstore and it's like yay book lovers um, so yes they're both really nice the characters are really engaging really well developed they go through a lot of stuff it does get spicy but more angsty and spicy and like sexual tensiony um, than like full-on sex on the page kind of thing um, there may be a couple of instances but it's actually I, I love them. I actually have Hot Potato, which is the third one, um, sitting on my Kindle waiting to be read and reviewed. <laughs> I know, Allison, don't kill me. Okay, number three. Level three, we have Evie Dre's Beauregard and the Beast. So I have read a couple of MM romances that are very relatable and everything, but Evie Dre's book at level three brings the spice in all the goodness and it also brings two of the most honest male characters i have seen and the reason i say this is because so i find that my partner is very sentimental my partner is very loving he's very romantic even though he's a man but i don't feel like i see a lot of romantic cheesy cute men represented often and so i really liked reading her book because i felt like i was reading about two men who were not afraid to be romantic or into musicals or um putting their feelings out there and being honest straight away there was no real hiding like oh i won't say my feelings or oh i hope he sees what I mean it's like no it's just like they're both two straightforward men straight into it um they both support each other in their dreams it's a very realistic like things happen in life and it separates us and we find a way to come back together um but in a realistic way not like in like oh that would never happen in real life um I was actually surprised at some of the turns the story took also if you didn't notice Beauregard and the Beast aka Beauty and the Beast. Um, so there are some Beauty and the Beast references in the book that had me dying. Guys, the scene where like, it would be when like the Beast shows Beauty the library, hilarious. So do give yourself a read if you're looking for some spiciness, some realness, some sentimental men um, who are not afraid to hide their feelings from each other. Um, on level four, we have two. We have You Make Me Curious, which is a short story by Jamie C. Lena. Um, it is real spicy from the get-go. It is a short story. It only has like 93 pages, if I'm correct. And it just gets rolling. And as it sounds, you make me curious. So let's say that one man makes another man curious and things evolve from there. So I'm not gonna ruin the story because it's a short story, so if I say anything, I'm just basically telling it to you. So I'm gonna leave that here, whoop, so you can check it out. The second one in my number four category is Lily Michaels, A Granted Wish. So this book will actually come out November 19, which might be today. Um, and so you guys should check it out. It's a holiday romance and basically assistant meets boss and boss's wishes get granted very sexily, maybe in the office, maybe in other places. Um, yeah, but let, let me put a stop to that. Yes, it does, it is sexy, there is sex, not gonna lie. However, it is wholesome, loving, consentful, and even when they're being sexy as hell, you can still feel the love and the connection and what's really between them, which again is something that I really love. It gets sexy, but it doesn't get raunchy. It gets sexy and loving. And I can stay with that because there's something I need in a book is for me to believe that relationship, whether it's a short story or not. And last but not least, level five, 
Playing Around by Susan Clay. So Susan Clay is an amazing writer and I also happened to get her book signed before my birthday, for my birthday, so I was super excited. So Playing Around is actually a little bit different. Playing Around is an MMF story. So male, male, female. And the male and male next to each other means that the male and male actually interact in this story as well as the male and female counterparts, which means that threesomes are involved. It's also a little bit sexual. It also explores other types of relationships like ethically non-monogamous relationships and what that means. It actually um, explores uh, bisexuality. It also explores transsexuality. Um, and so there's a lot of representation in the book. That one's more of a new adult. The boys have just, or the men have just arrived in college. Um, they're um, introduced to a whole new environment. Now, again, even though there are three sums in this book, even though it's an MF book, MMF book, it's not a everybody sleeping around with everyone book. It's a wholesome, consenting, everybody has agreed to do what they're doing. Nobody's cheating on anyone. Nobody's mistreating anyone. Nobody's hurting anyone. Everything that's going on in these stories is totally consentful, totally what people in the relationship wanted, um, which again, super important. Even better is that all of these stories have a happily ever after. So even though your characters will go through a struggle and they will probably, you'll probably cry with them and be happy with them and get sexy with them, um, they all end happily. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you give MM Romance a chance and I won't judge. If you like number one or you like five, be my guest, the more the merrier. I just hope that you can see a little bit more of what the genre offers and give it a try. There's so many amazing indie authors. If you are looking to see more about it, you can visit the hashtag WriteLGBT on Twitter or the at WriteLGBT on Twitter as well, which is run by one of the authors that I mentioned in this video, at Evie Dre. Um, she runs a community for LGBT authors. Um, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> LGBT readers as well and so you guys can go there and even get to see a snippet of what will be coming out soon which is like one of my favorite things to do um so let me know if you like this video what are your favorite mm romances why do you read mm romances and I'll see you next time bye bye